and action. We're on the set of Prime Suspect in a North London hospital as preparations are underway for one of the crucial scenes. From the very beginning, the show earns a reputation for its attention to detail. We really tried to make it as realistic as possible. And, you know, remember when it first came out, police dramas tended not to... Now, you know, they they really drive towards getting all the details of the police station right and all of that. But before that, they really didn't. It was a weird sort of fantasy world that these dramas operated in. We have a police advisor um, who stays very much in the background, but who reads every draft of the script um, and comments upon it, and equally is available for us to research whether it's about police procedure or about changes in the law or just about what they eat, what they drink, and where they go and how they behave. For the first prime suspect, director Chris Manor used theatre techniques to achieve the realistic atmosphere of the incident room. I had an audition for Chris Manor, and he got me to improvise, so I started improvising. And then he called in other people that he was auditioning, and, I, and he asked me if I would improvise with them. So I did, and I got the role in nice work, shot it, filmed it, completed, and um, he called me back to do this role in play a young policeman in uh, Prime Suspect. And he said that there'd be a lot of ad-libbing and improvisation going on in the background scene. It was the world's worst thing you could ever say to actors is, you know, oh, you can add a little bit. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, right. I'm off. Okay, then. The wife's yes, mother's down with me. You've got to be up all night. Thank you. Well, Makes uh, more trips than the a plumber. And then it became a standing joke. Everyone would be, they'd all fight for the last line. No way, I am not opening a book. Well, why not? We can all have a few quid out of it. Because the last time I ended up 75 quid out of yeah, You know why that was, didn't you? Right. I remember we were doing this bit where the food's come round and I go, I picked up the sandwich and I just said... What's happening? Three times I've asked for sausages and got bleaten salad. And I actually kept it in. Those kind of scenes, I thought, were, the, were a first on British television and very well crafted indeed. What happened was, you get ten actors and all these guys standing around and there's Helen Mirren you know, in the scene, you get a lot of this, you know, kind of people saying, all right, you're sitting there, Chris would say, right, Andy, I want you to sit there, you're on the phone, and then when she walks past, say, yeah, I'm on it now, Gov. And you get, like, actors sort of standing in front of you, <laughs> and you'd be like, what's going on? So there was a lot of that awareness of, like, he's standing in front of me, and I'm on the phone, hang on, let's just lean this way a little bit, and I'll be in frame. Come here. We found his car, yeah? No, it's not in the estate. Nobody's seen it. His girlfriend said it was there when we were at the flat this morning. I got everyone I can trying to trace it. Good lad. Let's have Marlowe up again, shall we? Right, Captain. Jesus, what you take the money? Just sure what the hell you're doing up at this time of night. Put your mother on. Helen was all right. What have we got on? On the right is Della Mornay. She'll be standing and walking around eating her crisps. Right, Della Mornay. He could have had a set of keys. Because her handbag was found in the room, but no keys. But there was one scene where, uh, in Prime Suspect 1, I've got a black eye from the boxing, and we're all sitting round in a circle, and the camera's on a track going round us. Just let me have ten minutes with you. I ain't got to get nothing out of upstairs. Problem was, it was the first problem day we ever had where we started laughing. Got, for some strange reason, the six of us, as soon as that camera moved, it was right for me to say so, <laughs> we'd all burst into tears. It was just, so he got to the, and it was the first time I ever see Chris Moore lose it, but after about four or five times, he's dragged the cans up and come over. He said, you know, what is going on? He said, he's got to stop. And everyone was like, because he'd give us that free reign, but we sort of took, give us an inch, we took four mile, you know. If you walked in quite often towards the end of one of those very busy scenes, and you dropped a clanger, you, got, you fluffed your lines, or you, you did something stupid like bump into the furniture, um, then they'd have to reset and go way back over the whole thing. So that tends to concentrate the mind uh, quite well. Hello, Maureen. Hi, Gov. Um, is any of those lads about? No, I think they've all gone home. It was my 40th birthday, and I asked everybody if they kind of um, would want to go for a drink, and they went, no, no, we've all got to go home. And I thought, what, you're miserable? You miserable load of what's it because, and I felt really hurt. My said to me, I'll take you for a drink in some pub in Hammersmith. I went, oh, all right then, thanks. Night. Night. And they've got this massive surprise party, which obviously was the party that they gave to Tennyson. 
So she opens the doors, lights spring on, and there's, there's the party, a nice ending. Why was she born so beautiful? Why was she born at all? Oh, God, that scene, yeah, when everyone's cheering her. Yeah, I remember that day. That was a long day. She's no bloody use to anyone. Yeah, I just remember it was a steady cam shot, but it was quite a difficult shot to set up for everyone in the right positions to be caught at the right moment. <laughs> that was very hard to, to get that shot. I mean, imagine what I was saying earlier, all the actors pushing in for position there. Hey, lads. <laughs>